Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, in this video, uh, I am going to cover AWS interview questions. I am dividing this video series into multiple parts so that uh, it will be easy for you guys to watch them in different videos rather watching one big uh, video with uh, one two hours. I am sharing with you guys the common interview questions uh, generally I faced when I was uh, appearing for uh, some interviews. Let's go with those questions now. The first one, how to encrypt existing ABS volumes. All of you know ABS is Elastic Block Store which is a hard disk for EC2 instance. EBS supports uh, encryptions means uh, you might be storing some sensitive data on uh, EBS volume probably your uh, security uh, people say it needs to be encrypted the question is if you want to encrypt existing EBS volume how you do it so there is no direct option to enable encryption on uh, EBS volumes let's randomly take some volume and uh, see if it is encrypted it's not encrypted and let's go to actions uh, there's no direct option to say enable encryption let's go to modify volume and even in the screen we don't have options to enable encryption okay the only way we can enable encryptions on the volumes which is already created is we should take a snapshot we should take a snapshot it's completed from snapshot we should create a volume so while creating we have options to encrypt enable encryption uh, you could use a master key which is default or uh, we can use a custom uh, key for uh, encryption so once you create this volume then we go and attach this to our ec2 instance that's the procedure to enable encryptions on uh, existing abs volumes the next question is what is NAT? The difference between Internet Gateway and NAT. NAT stands for Net Network Address Translation. NAT is used for uh, providing uh, Internet access, only outbound Internet access. NAT is commonly used in private subnets. If EC2 instances in private subnet wants to download something from Internet, for example, it wants to download some patches from internet we configure NAT either NAT gateway or NAT instance for private subnets it allows only outbound internet connection and it also doesn't uh, ask for public IPs so EC2 instances in private subnet with private IP using NAT they can download something from internet again it allows only outbound internet connection it won't give inbound access i mean if someone from internet wants to connect to our private ec2 instances in private subnet nat doesn't allow that and coming to internet gateway it's also a gateway for internet access internet gateway provides inbound connections internet connections as well as outbound internet connections so internet gateways are typically used in public subnets so instances in public subnets with public ip they can access internet and vice versa so people over internet also can access ec instances in public subnet with public ip or elastic ip question number three is if ec2 reaches 100% of CPU utilization uh, how to uh, restart EC2 instance automatically 
We can achieve this in several different ways. I'll explain one approach. Uh, this can be implemented using uh, a CloudWatch. Let's go to CloudWatch. So from CloudWatch, I can create alarm on EC2 instance. Right, so create alarm, select metric, uh, EC2 per instance metrics, randomly choose any EC2. Let's pick uh, CPU utilization, right? Self metric. So let me put uh, th these things we can uh, change. I mean, you can wait for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. Let me choose one minute there and the condition is greater than so i'll keep it 90 percent even though my question says uh, if cpu utilization is 100 percent so i'm putting a condition on 90 if cpu utilization is 90 greater than 90 i mean go next so in notification section we have EC2 action. So go there, add EC2 action. So when it is in alarm state, we have reboot this instance. So this is one approach uh, to automatically restart EC2 instance when CPU is going high. Second approach would be, uh, let's say a CPU is going 100% and EC2 instance is stopping. Then what I can do is uh, I can have events configured. Uh, events, data rule, uh, event pattern, service, EC2. Okay, uh, event type, EC2 instance, state chain notification. Uh, I want to listen for a specific state which is uh, stopping and stop or i can choose only one okay or i can choose both let me just choose stopped so i could say any instance or specific instance i'll put the id of that instance okay so when that specific instance stopped the target i could choose uh, a lambda function so I will go and create AWS Lambda function that gets triggered in that Lambda function. I'll get details about EC2 instance, which is stopped. I'll get instance ID, region, all that. So with help of that, using Python code, I could start my EC2 instance. So that is the second solution. Now let's go to next question. Difference between AMI and uh, snapshot ami is a complete ec2 backup means it backs up your virtual machine along with its uh, ebs volumes that is uh, if i take uh, a backup of this ec2 instance go to actions image and templates create image so it takes a backup of my ec2 along with attached EBS volumes. When I restore, it is restored as EC2 and all volumes also restored when I do a restore. That is AMI. So AMI is a full EC2 backup and snapshot is just a volume backup. Means uh, I can go and pick up a volume and uh, I could say create snapshot. It's just taking a backup of that data volume and when I restore it it creates back a volume right and if I want to use it I can go and attach mount and use it that's the difference between AMI and snapshots okay let's move to next question what is high availability 
How do you achieve it in EC2? See, high availability means we are making our application uh, reachable even in case of uh, failures. So in Amazon, we implement high availability by setting up EC2 instances across uh, multiple AZs. So Amazon has data centers in regions and the regions we will have multiple AZs name as name implies availability zones means it is designed for designing your applications with high availability so to achieve high availability for ec2 instances we put ec2 instances and our applications on ec2 instances across availability zones if any availability zone fails uh, the traffic is i mean processed by ec2 instances in second or third availability zones let's go to next question difference between security group and uh, network access control list okay security group acts at ec2 instance level it is a firewall which protects that ec2 instance in security group we don't have explicit allow deny I mean, if I want to block any IP address in a security group, it's not possible. Okay. So the rules I add is implicit allow. If a traffic doesn't match any rule in security group means that's implicit deny. We also call security groups stateful means if there is inbound traffic means a traffic which is initiated outside VPC and which is coming into our EC2. That's called inbound traffic. For inbound traffic, security group applies only inbound rule. If inbound rule says allow, traffic enters in, and when traffic returns back, it won't apply outbound rule. That behavior is called stateful behavior. So security groups are stateful. And coming to network ACLs, it's also a firewall. It's also almost pretty much simple and same as uh, security groups, but there are a few differences. Network ACL is attached to a subnet, means it's going to secure that complete subnet or multiple subnets associated with this network access control list. In network access control list, we have explicit allow explicit deny so if you want to blacklist an ip in network acl i can put that ip and i could say all traffic deny so we have options to blacklist ip addresses as well as whitelist ip addresses knuckles they are stateless means if there is inbound traffic it applies inbound rules okay if it allows traffic enters when it returns back it also applies outbound rule so if outbound rule blocks the traffic will not leave our uh, subnet so this is called stateless security groups are stateful one subnet can have only one NACL only one and multiple subnets can point to same NACL but security groups one instance can have multiple security groups okay so basically security groups are attached to elastic network interface if your ec2 has two enis for each eni we can have five security groups okay that's about differences between security group and network access control list let's move on to the final question for part one there are three VPCs, A, B, and C. So A is paired with B, and B is paired with C, okay? Now the question is, can A and C talk to each other? Means A is paired with B. So EC2 instances in A can talk to EC2 instances in B over private IP, likewise, EC2 instances in B can talk to EC2 instances in C over private IP. But 
ec2 instances in a cannot communicate with c so means this is called transitive peering so vpc peering doesn't support transitive peering if a and c wants to communicate we should create a connection peering connection between a and c okay so that's all from this video guys i, I hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll come up with part 2 with more aws interview questions